and what's going on it's your boy fontaine vip soundlab.com back on machine 2.2 this time we're going to be getting uh midi information recorded inside of your daw in this particular situation we're going to be using ableton live 9. so in this particular situation in ableton live 9 the first thing that you're going to need is what's called an external instrument track you go right here under instruments you grab an external instrument you drag and drop it over here you want to activate your inputs and your outputs by selecting this io icon here you're going to select let me give you a better view here MIDI from machine and machine okay so now we have that set up it's pretty much ABC one two three and the audio out is coming from here and then you want to arm this track so in other words this track is going to be getting the MIDI information from machine and recorded here from that point what's going to happen is we're going to trigger that MIDI information back into machine why? Because an external track is not going to play back anything because it's just an external track. All right. So in machine, there's little things we got to do to get things set up first. So as you can see right here under group input, we want to have the active icon selected to activate the MIDI channels. We're going to select MIDI channel uh, one. The through icon, we're going to turn this off. Why? Because we don't want to have any midi notes that's going to be like getting like a feedback or a loop uh it'll make like a terrible sound same thing when you're uh getting your channel set up here make sure that you have them all on the uh correct channel or that might cause a feedback loop also so i'm gonna select these highlight all that make sure that's on one actually i probably didn't have to even do that all right so now the root note we're gonna put this at c3 and i'm gonna hold shift and slide this so I can get it a little more accurate. There we go, C3. And the reason for that is because Native Instruments defaulted it to uh, C2, I believe, for the new chord and scale feature. But anyway, we got that set up. All right, so then we're gonna jump over here to sound input, again, under MIDI. The active icon, we're gonna leave this off. The MIDI channel, if it's defaulted to all on yours, you're gonna select one or whatever MIDI channel that you wanna uh, used it's perfectly fine your through icon you want to have this selected to off so again let's review that right quick on the group level input midi tab active on midi channel one get your root note set to c3 turn the through icon off jump over to sound input active off midi channel one the through icon leave this off sound we're going to jump over to input or rather to output now under midi the destination we're going to select host why because in other words, destination is meaning the MIDI information is going to be traveling from machine to your host DAW now in this particular situation, which is Ableton Live 9. Okay. And again, MIDI channel one. And these notes, as you can see right there, as I'm clicking on them, see that transpose uh, icon right there? They're automatically transposing. So everything is set up correctly. To test this, you go on your hardware controller and you tap on your pads. Okay, there you go. So if it's not set up correctly, you'll tap on your pads. You'll hear uh, maybe like a feedback or, or not, not a feedback, but it might trigger uh, some other sounds that it shouldn't be doing. So that's one way to test it out. You know, save yourself a headache. You, check, you just test it like that and you know you're ready to roll. All right, so we grab a blank scene here. So at this point, machine is basically a sound module to take the MIDI information. All right, so we have all that set up. We arm the instrument track here. And I'm not trying to play anything. I'm just trying to give you an example here. So I'm just going to just do something really, really quick. Like just add some hi-hats, snares, and some kicks like that. Just to show you that it's going to trigger. So then I'm going to zoom in on this right quick. Because again, this is just for an example. So I'm not trying to play anything. I'm just going to take this. And I'm just going to slide this over like that. Just to show you that's going to trigger. So at this point, what happens is we're going to trigger this information back inside the machine. So we're going to have to unarm this. Why? Because again, this is just a uh, an external MIDI track. It's not going to do anything. So to play that back under machine, you want to arm machine here. Okay. You want to go to the in and out icon here, or rather around uh, this, this icon here. You want to select from all channels to external instrument here. All right. So we have external instrument selected there. So now when I play this back, there you go. 
all right now I have other tutorials on you know if you want to do a multi-track uh, MIDI session under group MIDI bats see I'm using sounds to MIDI notes on this example which puts the MIDI notes you know like one big hodgepodge you can use sounds to MIDI channels that's another way you can do it and if you have your MIDI information inside machine you can just use a drag and drop icon and it'll separate your MIDI and put it on separate uh, MIDI channels that way I have a video on that on the site if you want to check that out all right, we'll just hold it up right there. This your boy Fontaine, VIPSoundLab.com. Be sure to come by the website. We have free machine tutorials. We give away free controller, uh, editor templates, sessions. We're also a, uh, a drum kit company. You can come by the site and get some banging drum kits. Uh, what I'm going to do with this session, I'm going to uh, save it to the desktop. I'm going to zip it up, upload it on the site. That way you guys can download it and use it as a learning tool. All right, so that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.